Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today you are going to be talking about the beautiful planet Venus. And some really exciting news coming from NASA about this planet. Because after years and years of what's known as the Venus curse, NASA has announced not one, but two different missions that are going to be definitely launching in the next decade or so. Specifically in 2028 and very likely 2029. Now let's talk about these missions and also why this is so important, but more importantly let's talk about Venus as a planet and what we want to learn about it. First of all, did you know that the first flight on another planet was not actually the helicopter on Mars, but it was something on Venus? Well, most of us have already forgotten or possibly have never even known that. The first flight on Venus was the Soviet Vega probe. But it wasn't a helicopter, it was a balloon, and there were two of them launched by the Soviets in the 80s. And both of these missions survived and produced a lot of data, allowing the scientists to study the Venusian atmosphere. So this was the first official flight on another planet. And crazily enough, this was 36 years ago from when I'm making this video, so that was a pretty big achievement back then. But since then, we sort of forgot about Venus, and there's actually a really important reason for this. Well, it was actually many reasons, but the main reason is that the attention shifted to Mars. But why? It was actually because of this one very silly thing that we discovered that turned out to be nothing. Following the initial success on Venus, back in the 90s, the scientists discovered that inside this meteorite you see that was discovered in the Antarctica, which was a Martian meteorite, the scientists discovered this worm-like feature that you can kind of see right here that I've discussed in some of the previous videos, that many people believe to be some sort of a form of life that might have existed on Mars. And because of this, back in, I think it was 96 or possibly 97, okay, it was August 7th of 1996, President Clinton made an official announcement that we found life on another planet. Since then, the entire attention shifted to Mars. But then, only within a few years after this announcement, several scientists recreated these particular features, we're talking about these features, through a very simple chemical reaction, and because of this, it was then confirmed that it was not a life at all, it was just chemicals. But this didn't change the fact that suddenly Mars became the place to go, everybody wanted to land there, and there were now also rovers exploring Mars and exploring various features. And because of this, Venus was unfortunately forgotten. And with the disappearance of the Soviet Union, Russia no longer had any funding to continue its Venusian missions either. And so for many years, many NASA scientists studying Venus were desperately trying to get some sort of financial support or funding from either a government organization or specifically something like NASA to try to launch something on Venus. But they've been failing year after year after year. And this became known as the curse of Venus. Now, there were actually other organizations such as Japanese JAXA that launched missions to Venus and explored it in more detail. But NASA unfortunately lost interest until today, with both of the missions that I'm going to discuss in a few seconds being some of the most complex and some of the most advanced missions anyone ever planned, which is probably why they ended up finally winning the award, the financial award from NASA. They were just too good to say no to. Oh, and by the way, they were competing for the funding from the Discovery program, which was roughly around $500 million. The program that has already officially launched the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the inside probe on Mars that unfortunately is currently malfunctioning due to the lack of energy, and the upcoming Lucy probe, Psyche probe, and Megany probe that I'm going to be talking about in one of the future videos. But now as you can see there are two more missions, Da Vinci Plus and a mission known as Veritas. Both confirmed, both received their funding, and both are going to be launched between 2028 and 2030. And so the first mission, which is what you see right here, is Da Vinci Plus. Now this one is going to be an atmospheric lander, but it's not going to be too complex. Da Vinci in this case stands for Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigation of Noble Gases, Chemistry and Imaging, and its main point is to go through the atmosphere of Venus and gather as much information as possible on various gases inside the atmosphere, specifically looking for various types of CO2 and CO2 isotopes, and of course also looking at various composition of the noble gases. These gases can actually help us understand how the atmosphere evolved over time and what probably happened on Venus billions of years ago. And so by collecting the information on these gases, they can easily establish if Venus one day had some sort of an ocean, or if it was always some sort of a dry, very hot and very acidic world like it is today. 
And because a lot of these noble gases have different isotopes as well, we normally, by studying them, can tell where they came from. So for example, if there was an ocean a long time ago, we'll be able to identify certain isotopes that should be present in the Venusian atmosphere. So for example, it's going to have certain amounts of xenon, certain amounts of argon, and certain amounts of helium. And because scientists today, based on what we have on Earth, know exactly where various isotopes of these noble gases usually come from, it's going to be an extremely effective way for the scientists to study the history of Venus as a planet. And so, for example, we know that helium-3 that you can see on the left usually comes from the deep interior of the planet, whereas helium-4 on the right usually comes from the upper crust. Depending on what the scientists discover more in Venusian atmosphere, they can then determine what the planetary activity was like. Were there a lot of volcanoes going on, or was Venus more or less static and did not have as much activity? And because noble gases generally do not interact with carbon dioxide, water, or really pretty much anything, they kind of just stay in the atmosphere, not reacting with anything, and thus can be used to study the history of the atmosphere. More importantly, allowing us to understand where exactly these gases came from and what happened to Venus in the past. But the location where this mission is going to be landing is also very important. It's going to be studying these really mysterious and very strange structures known as tesserae. These are unusual formations on the surface of Venus and seem to only exist on this planet, but nobody really knows or understands where they came from. In this image right here, you can kind of see some of them underlined in white. And Veritas is going to be basically aiming for one of these structures, and so when landing there, it's going to be able to take some of the most high resolution, some of the highest quality pictures of Venus we've ever had, and also pictures of those tesserae. Now, because some scientists believe that these tesserae represent potential continents that used to exist on Venus, this could actually allow us to understand if Venus one day had plate tectonics. Did it have continents like Earth? And if so, why did they suddenly stop? So this is one of the more important parts of this mission. At the same time, by using other sensors, such as the infrared sensor, it's going to try to map the nearby region, providing us an extremely accurate topological map of the region where it lands. And because it's also going to have an orbiter that's going to stay in orbit and communicate with this particular probe, this will present a perfect opportunity to map a lot of regions and to try to understand what exactly happened on this planet a long time ago. But as you can probably imagine, this probe is not going to survive for a very long time. Just like the Soviet probes back in the days, there's a very high chance it's not going to be built to survive longer than a few hours or maybe maximum a day or so. It's not unclear if this is going to be using some of the materials I mentioned in one of the previous videos that can survive in these hellish conditions, but right now the scientists are planning to use just the regular silicon-based materials that are not going to be very durable. Although because there are still like 8 years to go, chances are everything might change. And one of the reasons why it's still going to be probably using silicon technology, which usually stops functioning once temperatures reach about 250 degrees Celsius, is because we don't really have a functioning radio that works at higher temperatures. And this probe needs to be able to send us a lot of data and a lot of information very quickly. Because of this, we still have to rely on the old technology for now. And so the Da Vinci mission is going to be studying the history of Venusian atmosphere and to some extent also the history of possible plate tectonics on this planet. But then the other mission, the mission known as Veritas, is going to be an orbiter, and this one is going to only have one main purpose. As you can probably tell from this image, it's going to map everything. It's going to use a lot of different advanced technology, including infrared and radar technology, to map as much of the surface as possible, even piercing through some of the upper layers. Which is going to be very similar to that lunar map I've discussed in one of the previous videos, that allows the scientists to identify everything, including the type of rock in certain locations. And all of this is going to be done in possibly a few years after the mission is launched. For this, it's actually going to be using some of the sensors from the French agency and from the German agency, so technically this is going to be an international collaboration. And because our current map of Venus kind of looks like this, and it's extremely low in detail, and really is based on some of the older studies from decades ago, the Veritas mission is going to be extremely important in helping us map and also understand what happened to Venus in the past, and what's happening on it right now in the present. Basically, is it still active? Are there still volcanoes? Is there still a lot of activity on the surface? Are there some unusual supercritical lakes or liquid carbon dioxide lakes? Or is something else really mysterious going on here? 
And this is of course super important to understand because if you look at this, the comparison between Earth and Venus, size-wise, mass-wise and even density-wise they're extremely similar. But something happened here and we're sort of worried it might also happen here. And because of this the scientists really want to understand what exactly happened to Venus in the past to turn it into that hellish, high pressure, high temperature, high acidity planet. So for example, was it because of the carbon dioxide release and the so-called greenhouse runaway effect? Was it because of some other event that somehow shut down the terrestrial activity and the plate tectonic? Or was it because the sun got hotter over time and eventually a lot of the early atmosphere escaped, creating the atmosphere that it has today? So all of this is definitely going to be hopefully answered in the next decade or so once these missions make it to Venus and get a few years to collect some data. And the data that we're going to get from there is going to be absolutely mind-blowing. So right here, what you're seeing, this is from 1989 and technically from the early 90s. This is from the NASA's Magellan probe, the last probe that got to map the Venusian surface. And remember, this was almost three decades ago. With the current technology that we have today and with the ability that we have to map a planet or a moon from the orbit with such extreme precision, the details we're going to be getting from Veritas mission at the end are going to be absolutely mind-blowing. So this right here is definitely going to be one of the most exciting missions in the next decade or so. But I guess one question here is, are they going to be also looking for phosphine or potential life? Well, the answer to that for now at least seems to be no. And mostly because phosphine and the idea of phosphine in Venusian atmosphere is more of a recent discovery. When the scientists were planning these missions and were officially applying for the funding from NASA, they didn't really know phosphine was even a thing in the atmosphere. Which also means that there's a chance they might actually attach some sort of a sensor or some other additional probe in order to potentially test Venus for the presence of bacterial life in the upper atmosphere. And discovering life here would be absolutely mind-blowing. Mostly because a lot of scientists today, or at least some scientists today, still strongly believe that the Venusian atmosphere has the capacity to actually support life in the upper atmosphere. And many scientists have been arguing that we know that life is there simply based on the observations from before. For example, based on the recent observations from the Japanese Akatsuki probe, they discovered unusual patches of ultraviolet observers as if something unusual was collecting ultraviolet light in the upper atmosphere of Venus. And some scientists proposed that this was a sign of bacterial life, most likely just collecting light to survive. But we obviously will not know any of this until an actual exploration of the atmosphere and the collection of the atmospheric sample and possibly some sort of a test to determine if it's life. We don't really know if it's going to be done, chances are it might not be these missions, but hopefully someone will test the atmosphere sometime in the future. Until then though, these missions are already super exciting. They're going to allow us to learn so much more about Venus we didn't know before, and more importantly we're going to learn so many more details that might help us see what might happen to our own planet. Venus is believed to be very similar to planet Earth, but it sort of turned into something completely different. And so learning the reasons behind this are very important. But anyway, on that note, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video, at least for now. We're going to be learning more details as we get closer and closer to the launch date, and also we might learn something else about Venus before then, simply from some of the other missions such as the Japanese missions. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, check out some of the previous Venusian videos I made on the topic, and maybe support the channel Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can see also in the description below. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.